must-have fashion accessory when I first joined Brookside would probably be a pair of strap-over Kios. Those really loud red or blue shoes with the Velcro straps over them. Sam O'Brien, I played Damon Grant in Brookside for the years 1982 to 87. It was double maths in the afternoon on a Tuesday, or you could take a day off to go for an audition on this new soap. What the blazes? Is this where the graffiti is? Yes, but I prefer it if you didn't go in there. I never had any idea about the power of television when I first started. It's only about two or three months in when I suddenly went, oh my God, what have I done? Have you been in there, Damon? Oh, you're messing about and things like that. Have you? I suppose so. Damon, don't tell me you're practising the kiss of life, aren't you? Do you find this defendant guilty or not guilty of conspiracy to burgle? Guilty. Damon, starting off, you know, incredibly immature, but then, you know, most lads of that age are. Liverpool, 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 Liverpool. <laughs> yes, the role of cling film. Yeah, now, I think we caused a bit of trouble with this because we suggested to half the nation that a good gag was, in fact, to put cling film over the bogs in school. There's a lot of teachers with damp underwear due to that storyline in Brookside. You're not taking me on. I have no money for that, so. The YTS story is certainly the one that sticks in my mind as, as the, 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 my first major storyline, you know, the, the driving force of an episode. You YTS, lad? Yeah. Well, whatever he tells you in there about you being kept on, don't you believe him, all right? You could still get a job. Oh, where are they? Well, this is a good <laughs> reference. It is, love. It's good. <laughs> It's not worth nothing of them! I might as well have stayed on the door! That is when Damon as a character turned from being just the kind of the bit of light relief into like into really entering into, into people's consciousness, you know. Hey! Just one more thing. What? I love you. Well, I used to wear great big hoop earrings, which, which have actually come back in now, so it's about, <laughs> it's about 14 years later, but it took 14 years for them to come back. All right, uh, kid. Is this your architect? Oh, no, no. I could it, couldn't I, you crooked little get? Jimmy Gorgon. Retired widower seeks same. That sounds as if you had another fella. Come on here, Dolly! Drive over me lawn! Come on, drive over me bloody lawn! Doesn't matter, I'm only a Dolly! I'm Gillian Kearney, I play Debbie McGrath, and I was in Brookside for a year, playing Damon's girlfriend. I think you thought I was very young, didn't you? <laughs> I know why that was. Possibly a couple That's because you were very young. <laughs> it's a little one named short, eh? Don't you remember it? It's his cousin, little Debbie McGrath. Little Debbie McGrath? I just thought she was a bit forward using her tongue when she kissed me. <laughs> I did not! I just used to get letters really just to say, oh, I think that you and Damon are really nice couple together and oh, I love him type of thing. It was, that was all the ever used to really write about Damon. It was never billed as like, oh, this is it, this is going to be the big romance. It just kind of ended up as that, you know. If you were really bothered about it, it'd be enough that we love each other. Love! Listen, lad, when you flogged your guts out for years and end so she could have the chances you never had, then you can walk in here and start lecturing me about love. It was an idea of uh, Mr. Redmond's to, to do these soap bubbles, as he called them. And that was the first one planned. And then I put the spanner in the works by saying, I want to leave. Damon, you know what? It's blood. She's covered in blood. You were finishing at 12 o'clock, weren't you, that yeah. night? And it was sort of coming up to midnight and we finished that and he died on the steps. Damon, talk to me.
I was very last time in Peter Brooks, as yeah, because I think they had, they, had, they had a stunt nose for the coffin. Julie had to act her little socks off with this imposter <laughs> of my dead body in the coffin. This is what I threw on Damon's grave. <laughs> Never forget that. <laughs> That's quite close, this. You can say that again. Sammy, well, it's dead, isn't it? Compared to our real home. This is your real home now, girl. Isn't that right, Chris? Yes, it is. And everything's going to be fine. The late 80s, um, yeah, I suppose Doc Martens and all that was in. Everyone wanted to be a brosette. Sayonara. And where do you sleep? Where do you think she's... I'm asking her, where do you sleep? With Billy. My name's Rachel Lindsay. I played the character of Sammy Rogers in Brookside. I was 15. Um, I'd actually memorised my lines. Uh, oh, back to front, back to front for nights before the first day. Yeah? Are you Samantha Rogers? Yeah, what do you want? I remember how Owen came into it. He was sending Sammy uh, Valentine cards and chocolates and going round to a house um, accusing her of sending them to him. And Why didn't you just ask me out? Well, I thought all hands would be asking you out, didn't I? And I just thought, oh, I feel a bit of a divvy now. Oh, you were brilliant. I hate you. Ah, oh, going to tell me, Mum. Oh, Sammy's caught him. Casey jumped so stupid. Ah, oh, Sammy's caught him. But well, the funny thing was, when he first got cast, I really didn't like him. Hi, Mr. R. I'm Owen. Get out. Following the stolen car in pursuit of holding back. Come on, Papa, catch go. Lose them. You'll never lose them. Look, just stop me. Um, after the crash, the character of Owen uh, went into a wheelchair and um, Sammy was kind of scarred, and I think that's when the alcohol storyline first started. You have been drinking, haven't you? Oh, don't talk soft. I can tell. Come here, let me smell your breath. That's got more significance now, actually, <laughs> the bottle of vodka. Look here, have some of that. It doesn't half make you feel better. No, thanks. It scared me a lot because of the response from teenagers. I used to get an awful lot of letters from teenagers who drank, who had drink problems. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh. So the relationship did go through a really, really bad patch at that time. What do you want to happen, eh? Next time she's going to get me right. She's going to do far worse than this unless I get some money. I'm Diane Burke and I play Katie Rogers and I've been in Brookside since December 1988, which is 12 years this year. I remember my first scene that I ever did. I walked into the living room like a piece of scenery and my arms were right down behind my side and I went... Mum, I don't know which is yesterday's milk. Yesterday's milk won't hurt, they've used that. The only way I can describe it is like being at drama school. Um, I went to school like every other young person did. I did my homework and, you know, did exams, but I had something a bit separate, like, like going to a club. Oh, Mum, we only need us an ordinary biro. Yeah, I know, but I thought you might like a nicer one. Well, they'll think I'm showing off. I wore this for four years non-stop. Katie had no casual clothes because every day when I came in, I got out of my old school uniform, my own one, into this one. Now you tell me what's going on, then I can help you. Not before. She'll kill me if I tell. Give us your bag. No. I think my first proper storyline was the bullying with Bagger. Go on. Give us it. No. Yeah, I think it was very true to life. I, I think they did it really well. I just remember thinking at the time, you know, this is what it's like for kids, you know, this is what really happens to them. It's all right you sounding off, but you can face up to it. I can't. Well, you don't know what it's like. Is your mum or your dad in? Yeah, my mum's in the back garden. Well, could you go and get her for me, please? Hey, Mum, some fat fella here wants to talk to you. I was quite into Brother Beyond. I was 14 at the time, yeah. Brother Beyond and Wet Wet West. Fancy Marty Pello. 
Tank fly, boss walk jam, nitty gritty. You're listening to the boy from the big bad city. He's not mine, is he? Terry! He's not mine, is he? Terry! Nice one, girls. Cheers. Thanks, Merry Crimbo. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, it's my line, not you. My name's Alex Fletcher, and I play Jackie Dixon in Brookside, and I've been in the show for 10 years. First time when we arrive on the back of the Moby, like the Clampets. <laughs> and the Farnhams are just, well, I think they'd started to call them months before us, and obviously they were, like, upper class, and they were horrified to see us drive in. <laughs> oh, my good God. We're surrounded. This was the dreaded shell trahi. <laughs> I had about 25 of them in every different colour. <laughs> hey, what do you think's paying for all this gear? Yeah. Who asked you? I asked myself. The first time I was ever embarrassed was when I lied a little bit in my audition and said that I was a brilliant swimmer. And the director said, so have you been training then? And I was like, no. You'll get to fancy a lad sometime. Just wait and see. Eh, uh, I don't think so. I'll have to live with Tony and Mike. <sighs> God, they put me off for life. I'm Paul Byatt, I play Mike Dixon in Brookside and I've been in the show for 10 years. I had a leather coat on, which didn't fit me. I was supposed to be the new James Dean of Brookside and I look more like a Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Pack it in, lad. Shut it, you, James Dean! Look, will you go home? Yeah, I think you better do one. I've got to try this on, actually, just, just, just to remind myself of how daft I look. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, the fans? Sorry, ma, I couldn't hear you. Well, I'm not surprised. I thought you weren't going to give us any more open air concerts. Oh, I've made a comeback. This will be a guitar, and uh, that'll be from the time when Mike Dixon was in the band. And uh, that's about as good as you got playing it as well. What did we stop for? That was just going well, that. I just kind of fell into it, because I was going to go off and do music and physics and go off to university and do a sound engineering course. And I just uh, went for the audition in my summer holidays, and next thing, ten years down the line, I'm still here. Oh, I the dreaded video camera. <laughs> when are they going to give me a break with this? <laughs> I've got nothing else to do. I'll give them a video camera. I have been walking around. <laughs>
if you find yourself slipping some, remember, drink harp, stay sharp. Thorough cleansing can be hard work. Now Laboratoire Garnier have created Synergy Pure Deep Pore Wash. Every day the antibacterial formula with microparticles thoroughly cleanses and helps to dislodge impurities. Synergy Pure. Nothing to see but pure confidence. Synergy Pure Deep Pore Wash. Formulated and controlled by Laboratoire Garnier. Every little piece of extra from Wrigley's instantly unleashes a mighty blast of mintiness that leaves your breath totally fresh. So why keep it to yourself? You can't get fresher than extra. Well, Pop's watch you then at that time, the chunky watch is so big that you could clip off and put them on your dumb finger. <gasps> It was an accident. You have to believe it was an accident, sir. Trevor. Hello, love. I'm Tiffany Chapman and I play Rachel Jordash and I've been in Brookside for about seven years. There was me, uh, Anna Friel, who played Beth, and there was Sandra Maitland, who played my mum. And then there was Trevor. Is mum okay? She's fine. She's asleep. Ah. I'm cold. It was strange doing them scenes. I'm glad, in a way, that I was young when I did them. I'll kill us all! <laughs> <laughs> Just all seems really strange, you know, and it's like not real, and you're just thinking, oh my goodness, it's really weird. So you'd rather go and sit with Simon and his weirdo mates than come round to mine. They're not weird, there's nothing wrong with them. Then you like Bible. This will have been from my cult days when this is all Katie read for about phew, 18 months. Do you, Kate, wish to receive through baptism to this church? I do. It lasted a long time, I remember. Um, and they slowly, you know, they didn't all of a sudden go, oh, Katie's in a cult and she's gone all weird. They kind of, bit by bit, let Simon kind of manipulate her and get it into it. Say you're sorry. Say it. I'm sorry, Simon. I'm sorry, Simon. And it was funny playing it because some of the things he said to her, I used to think, as if you'd fall for this one, but Katie did, because Katie's like that. I think I'm dying. Rotten hell, Jimmy. because you're gay and that's why I told the reporter about you. It was you. Yeah, I told him. Because I wanted everyone to know. You know, I'd never really kind of, I'd never been through anything like that. I'd never really experienced it or heard of it. He was my dad and he loved me. He never touched me. He was my dad and you killed him. I don't think I really kind of took it in until like years later. She was a cheeky character, you know, from a teenager. How many sugar Sinbad? 20. And she was a strong, she had an extremely strong personality. I think the writers just thought, right, well, you know, we'll, we'll take her down this route and see how she gets on. That's obviously when I own the salon with Peter, the hairdresser. Jackie D's style house. <laughs> Couldn't get any camper, I don't think. <laughs> You're scarving already. God, will she like it? I'm just telling about the launch today. She's already talking about expanding. Yeah, Jackie says you hardly use the storage space above the shop, so it makes sense to knock through to it. You what? I don't know where she got all the money from, but that soaps for you. <laughs> it was a shell suit, like an Agama or a Sergio Ticini. That was 
probably it. You want to kiss you goodbye? Where's your mummy? Or your auntie Katie? Not here. You've got no sense of fun, have you? What's going on, Mike? Where are we going? Cuddly Toy. This will be from the Thailand storyline when Mike Dixon got nicked for drugs. Um, they put the, all the uh, drugs inside the teddy. We went to Manchester Airport and then I think the, the, the lighting fella changed all the lights to, to Bangkok and I think he put a bit of smoke in there and all that. And, uh, but we did all the prison scenes in Chilwell. <laughs> Just in one of the back rooms there. But they were good scenes to do. I've got to go home. There's nothing I can do this end. He says I could get dragged into it. <sighs> Jerry, <laughs> you can't leave me here. Oh, I've got to. It was a good storyline. The only problem with it was that I was out. I was in jail for like four months. I was in prison for far too long. <laughs> I'm Philip Olivier, and I play Tim O'Leary in Brookside. I've been in Brookside about five years now. When I was told that I was going to play this part, Tin Ed, first of all, I looked at this role and said, Tin Ed, uh, I was thinking, oh God, what is this? They call me Tin Ed, because I can nut anything or anyone, and it doesn't hurt me. When the audience reacted to Tin Ed the bully, um, they were kind of thinking that I really was him and they were shouting stuff like yeah, Tin Ed, why don't you try me on for size and stuff like that. We have lift off. Crap. Ah, rockets. This was when, close to when I first started Brookside and I was a bit of a bad lad. I thought I'd experiment with rockets on firework night. <laughs> And doing that, I set it into a van, which knocked my house down and left me and my family homeless. When I started, he was a bully, a bad lad. And the character that he is now is a lot more mature and um, respectable young man. I'm arresting you for rape. I'm Jennifer Ellison and I play Emily Shadwick in Brookside and I've been in the soap now for about three and a half years. At first, there wasn't much to think of her. She was just a pretty normal, boring teenage girl. Better introduce you to the gruesome twosome, seeing as we're going to be neighbours. This is Emily and this is Nikki. Now, she's a super bitch, isn't she? <laughs> You're just in time for the game. It's called not getting your head kicked in. I don't think it's made it any more difficult growing up. I think it's just made it the process quicker because I've been working with adults from such a young age. Well, obviously, because you're in the public eye, you, you're aware that people are watching you all the time. So you've got to be sensible. We need the sperm to get from A to B, as it were. Yeah, and how exactly do we do that? With one of these. Eee, I can't believe you got that one. Oh, that's a turkey baster for when I had to do my surrogacy storyline and Max had to thingy and, you know. <laughs> I was pleased because obviously it was, it was a storyline that was going to keep me busy, you know, for nine months at least. Oh, I want an epidural. It was hard work, even, even just pretending to push. <laughs> oh, God, you're beautiful. Do you want to see him? No. You definitely have seen a softer side to her than you know the hard-nosed businesswoman. Allegation? Allegation of what? He's accused you of sexual abuse. To be my lawful wedded wife. I do. Come on, admit it. It was you, wasn't it? Yeah. You know what? You're a total head the ball. No, I'm not. You're out of control. But you love me though, don't you? I'm terrified of you. 
Emily wears the trousers. <laughs> now, me and Phil always argue about this. You, I don't think he's too happy about playing that. I'd say at first that Emily definitely wore the trousers. Definitely. We either rob the murder and slags wheels or we don't go. I don't believe in doing this. We've got to get going. Tim! What? We've done it, haven't we? Condoms. Um, this can be only with Emily. See? I told you I ain't gay. Well, what's it been close to? has been evil Emily and dim Tim. <laughs> I want you to torture. What? I want you to set fire to Susanna's car. I wanted to know it was me! Ed, come on! I want to see her face when she finds it! I wish you were seeing it! Ed. Come on! She's got a conscience and soon she's going to realise that what she's doing wrong. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Came out of the blue, and the idea was to do it for a couple of years, mess about, have a look at this industry, and then go back to what I was doing anyway. And um, it just it didn't actually work out like that. It's just been like a, a great job and a great opportunity, and I wouldn't change a thing. Definitely not. This is when Bev made this draft. <laughs> oh, let me do that again. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. A vase. You've absolutely stumped me on the vase. I have no idea what relevance this vase has to any storylines I did in Brookside. Happy 18th birthday to all of Brookside. Happy 18th birthday, Brookside. Happy 18th birthday to Brookside. Happy 18th birthday, Brookside. Happy 18th birthday, Brookie. Happy 18th birthday, Brookside. Happy 18th birthday, Brookside. Happy 18th, Brookside. Now it's your manhood. Happy 18th birthday, Brookside. <laughs>